Hi, this is Greg. Welcome to the fifth out of five videos in the journal article and resource process. Um, this is a shorter video. This addresses what you'll be doing in weeks five, seven, and nine, where you are reading the second journal article in the same theme that you read in the first week of this pair. Remember, there are three pairs of weeks. Theme one, you do in week four and five. Theme two, you do in week six and seven, and theme three you do in week eight and nine. In the odd numbered weeks, the second weeks, you're doing the same theme as you did the week before. Plus, you're finalizing and posting all the resources. And so I'm, I want to discuss those weeks specifically. So in an earlier video, I already addressed how to locate and find the journal article and then how to read and write that specific journal review article. Simply follow those steps that you watched or that you've already done. In terms of your resources, what you want to do is take from the experience that you had in the first week out of this two-week cycle, looking for things online, trying to identify valuable resources, seeking out those things which would be useful to you in your classroom, but which also address the net standards and or address the materials that you're working with in that theme. So they're interconnected, they're interlocking, and they're related, okay? So you've done that, you found some of these resources. Now that you've found them, what you wanna make sure is that you have spent adequate time testing with them. I would say at least 20 to 30 minutes each. Approach it as if you would use this tool, not in just kind of, ooh, in the groovy days, I might try this out. No, what you wanna do is find a tool that you can actually use, you or your colleagues can use in your class for your students and then to conceive of how can I use this in my class and then test that out and work with that website for that specific purpose. If it turns out to be useless, you can still write a brief review about it. Don't ignore it, just say, I went to this tool, I was looking for it to address such and such a purpose because of these activities that I do in my class, but I found that when I tried to set it up after 20 or 30 minutes, it was a fail, it didn't work, don't use this tool for this purpose. Knowing which tools to not use is just as important as knowing which tools to use. So, you go out, you test tools, see how they could apply to your own work environment. If you don't know how to find these tools, Take some of the keywords that you use in your Google search for your articles, look through the keywords which are located in the abstract, look through the key ideas that are generated in your journal review from the prior week. Take those keywords, Google them, look for those keywords in online tools or online sites. You could even look for the person's name of one of the articles. Essentially use Google, other online, um, web 2.0 sites, look through the different categories of tools that they might have. There are many, many ways to find tools and widgets, etc. The primary point for this, again, is do not treat this as if it is a theoretical exercise. Treat this as if it is a very practical, your classroom, your student-oriented, how can you use this, and using the class time, the research efforts to personally benefit you and professionally benefit you as well as your students. I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, the majority of this week should be spent on either writing or researching and experiencing those online tools. All right, hope you have a good day.